Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and to another edition of Q&A. Let's begin. This is in regards to the books tab XC. Voya, do you consider the speaker volume loud enough? When watching a video, are the speakers loud enough to put the tablet down on a table and walk to the other side of the room where you still hear the sound at a volume where you can easily hear? Well, I think that they are more than loud enough. They have a decibelometer. So let's adjust the volume to something like halfway. To main team for Solar Explorer New Dawn. Um, it was a really, really fun part. One of the most fun parts of the project was actually... Let's walk back. Music. Um, getting to do music was... Um, yeah, I still get 40 decibels. So yes, it does work. And this was like 50%. So if you put the speakers to 100... I have only a few tracks here um, because this is my... Expand them all so that you can... Yeah, yes, they are loud enough. Again, regarding Tab XC, is it a deal breaker that this device only has Android 13 when Android 16 was just released? Android 13 is three years old and I read that Google will not provide support updates after October 2025, a few months from now. Well, I think that that's a very subjective type of a question because only you can know and decide if something like that is a deal breaker for you or not. For me personally, nope, not at all. It's not a deal breaker at all, not even a consideration, but I know that there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be like, oh no, it's the end of the world. And if you fall into that category, that's also fine. And you just need to be aware that, hey, that's a deal breaker for me. And then this is not a device for me. I'm looking for a 13 inch device to have the best possible reading experience of PDFs. And I could not care less for writing and taking notes. What would you say it the idea e-read, I guess the ideal reader is for me? Well, okay, the writing and note taking, but what about the front light and the colors? Because if the front light and the colors are not something that you're uh, looking for, well, then the ideal e-reader would be Note Max. And if it's not, well, then you only have one alternative, which is the Tab XC. Technically speaking, you do have two devices with the Quaderno A4 Gen 3 also being color, but it's not front lit and it's still using a Kaleido panel. So it's really, really dark and there's nothing you can actually do about it. So that kind of disqualifies it as a consideration because there's gonna be way too many environmental conditions where the device will simply not be bright enough to be readable and usable and will most definitely not fall into the category of the best possible. So for me, the best possible currently available is the Note Max because of the 300 PPI. And again, the requirement that you mentioned 13 inch screen, but it's monochromatic and it doesn't have a front light. One of the major challenges right now for people in business enterprises are not being officially able to use almost all e-ink or any e-ink devices. Boil down to these organizations believe that these devices do not fit into enterprise cyber security requirements. So if Remarkable would be able to sort out that, I believe it might most likely help them uh, to enter into enterprise markets. I completely and wholeheartedly agree and that's why I commented in the latest uh, update 320 that I wa that was at the time of making this video for Remarkable that even though it was like a relatively kind of smaller and more modest update that kind of reverted some of the user interface because of hiding functionalities that were right there in plain sight and accessible via one tap. Now you have to use two inexplicably, but the introduction of the enterprise type of a functionality and also if you couple that with the encryption functionality that Remarkable has introduced and has, those two I think are really, really important elements. If Remarkable manages to do that, then it will place itself at the forefront of the device to be considered and accepted by enterprise IT departments. And if that happens, then its sales are gonna go even higher which will hopefully prompt the competitions such as Supernote and Books to also start considering this approach to be competitive in the enterprise field as well. Make it so. A video once a week is so hard to wait for. Hope you are well. I am well and thank you for that. However, um, the difficulties are with basically YouTube algorithm and what Google has been doing since January of this year. Um, what you guys don't know is that like clockwork on January of every year, 
Google changes things in such a way that you see as a creator around a 30% drop off normally and 30% drop off across everything. And most crucially, the visibility or how buried your channel and your videos are. What actually happened in January of this year, and there's still really, really a hush about it, but something drastic has happened. And I think that you guys are also noticing it in the overall quality of YouTube itself and how your YouTube feed is starting to look like. First one is that well-established channels are being basically buried and completely deprioritized for small channels, short content and meaningless type of content. The second thing that also has happened is that that 30% cutoff has now been around 80% in the case of my deep guide. I have to very seriously reevaluate the business sense of um, continuing to do my deep guide or how I will continue to do it. I'm not going to shut down the channel, but currently as it is, it makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm going to be making a dedicated video about that where I break down uh, costs per video, time, etc. So that, and a little bit behind the scenes, so that you guys actually have a better idea of what it actually looks like. I think that a lot of people have quite a bit of misconception about what it means to have a channel of, I don't know, 60,000 subscribers, etc. etc. Voya, do you think having multiple pen stylus available for easy switching would be useful for you in a Remarkable Paper Pro? Currently, we can add up to two pen styles. I wish they supported adding more, up to five perhaps. I requested this feature, but they don't seem to be interested in implementing it. Any thoughts? Well, yes, I see absolutely zero reason not to have the ability to add at least four or five or however many can elegantly fit into the existing user interface. The only block here is going to be how seamless of a user interface and user experience integration this can be. Two is not enough in my opinion. Three would be minimum, four would be optimum as far as I'm concerned. Outdoor videos, please. Yes, there's gonna be some more outdoor videos, I think. But for now, here's a couple of clips. Awesome video, thank you. Can you recommend an alternative for the keyboard case considering the potential damage risk? I can't really recommend a keyboard case alternative. I can recommend to use what I'm using, which is the regular uh, flipbook cover folio, which works really, really nicely for my Note Max, but it's identical for Tab XC. And as for portable keyboards, well, there's a lot of them to choose from. And because this is a Bluetooth enabled device and it has USB OTG capabilities, that means that you can can choose any wired, wireless uh, or Bluetooth wireless keyboard to use with your device. I also made a dedicated video on that and you can view that video there where I was exploring which keyboard to choose. And my current keyboard of choice is the Logitech uh, Logi Go Keys, Go Keys, I think it's called. And it's super small, super portable, it has uh, switchblade keys, which are actually really, really nice. It is very, very shallow travel, but I actually got got used to it in a really, really uh, quick period of time. And I love using it now more and more. This is something that, uh, yeah, is my absolute go-to keyboard. And it usually goes either with the Note Max when I'm working outside, or it goes into the pouch with the Go 10.3 as part of my portable solution. I just would like to say that encryption on Remarkable 2 since 3.18 was important to my business use case. And this definitely ties into the earlier question that I talked about because that encryption on a device level is a really, really important step. So I'm really, really, really hopeful that Remarkable is a success with its enterprise endeavors so that it can actually push the others and other e-paper manufacturers to include these types of standards and functionalities as a must, as a standard, 
not as an optional extra nice to have. This is in regards to the Books in Sense Active Pen for Go 7 and Gold Color 7.2. Will this work with the Tab X? If you mean with the Tab X C, then yes, it will, but it will work badly because it's a really, really bad pen. If you mean with the old monochromatic Tab X, no, it won't because this is an active pen and Tab X is a Wacom enabled uh, device, which means that it requires the use of a passive Wacom EMR pen. If you like the work that I do and you would like to support that independence and work, you can head on over to mydeepguide.com shop where you can find high quality e-paper and template products for your e-paper devices. MDO or My Daily Organizer is a workbook to help you organize all of your personal or professional yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily needs. It is a completely interlinked workbook making it an extremely powerful addition to any of your e-paper devices. MMP or My Deep Guide Meeting Planner is also a hyperlinked workbook focused on helping you simplify, centralize and organize all of your meeting planning needs, allowing you seamless navigation between different meetings from the meeting index page and with each meeting having the ability to have individual agenda and notes. You can also find My Deep Guide curated templates, which is a collection of very carefully crafted notebook templates. What makes MDG curated templates it's different. All of them are pixel perfect for the device screen size that you are using them on. This is why there are so many different variations so that you can choose the one that fits your device perfectly. These templates also maintain a universal 8 millimeter line spacing standard and 4 millimeter grid spacing standard. Purchasing any of these products will enhance your productivity and simplify your organization. You also directly support independence of my deep guide. Thank you for all of the questions and for watching. If you have some more questions that you would like me to address, the best way of doing it is to put them down as comments in one of the Q&A videos, because this is typically the first place where I start to kind of sift through comments when trying to collect questions for videos of this type. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye!